So what are we going to do? I mean, it worked for the Mazibukos. They look happy. Although... Mrs. Mazibuko looks a little thirsty. Like when she looks at a man, she's just... dry. She just looks thirsty. Maybe Mr. Mazibuko's not. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey gorgeous, and welcome to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimange, and this is how I do things. So show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. And I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Use it, don't use it, take it. Don't take it listen do what you will with it because me i am no professional i am no professional whatsoever i'm just letting you know what i would do if i was in your shoes you know today is a thursday it's a date night challenge so i'm talking to all my married couples hi flash your ring and for all my single ladies don't worry he will come he will come my darlings but listen all to my married ladies all to my wifeies take all advice for your relationship with a pinch of salt. I'm just jumping into this one. No introduction, let's get into it. Take every single piece of advice that you get about your marriage from other married people or non-married people with a pinch of salt. Because, honeys, there are dangers in getting advice from people, even your parents. If you have any questions about your marriage, you want to make it better and you want to go seek some advice, here are five things that you need to know before you do. Number one, what is a successful relationship? Do you even know what a successful relationship is? What a successful relationship is to you is very different to what a successful relationship is to me. Personality, I think that a, re a successful relationship is people who are very hot for each other. They want each other every single second. The girl just wants to wrap the leg and just the man. Do you know what I mean? Like that is a successful relationship for me. It's a couple that is able to work well together and achieving both of their dreams is a couple that is on fire for God. Seriously, like ooh, on fire for God. Like burning, burning up on the inside. On fire together for God and fire individually for God as well. I don't know how many times my husband has told me to pray this year. More times than I can even count and it's only the 13th of the year. So it's a couple that knows how to pray together, how to live together, how to work hard together and how to strive towards their goals together. And most importantly, a couple where the leg goes round regularly. Number two, relationship dynamics are extremely unique. There may be one relationship where both parties feel as though they need to get the best economic success that they can get individually. So you go do your job there, babes. I go do my job that way. And we just go to the top, both of us. Whereas another relationship believes in one leads and the other one will support because it's not just about external success, but internal success in our home. Is our house clean? Are we eating right? Are our children fed? Are we, are we living in a good home environment? So those things may not be important to another couple, but for you they are. So relationship dynamics work very differently. Whereas one couple, one person cleans and the other person takes care of other things. Whereas your relationship, it's a 50-50 thing. We both clean, we both cook, we both do the laundry, we split the chores right down the middle. There is no job that is for a woman and a job that is for a man. It is for all of us. Whereas in another couple is like, men do the trash in my house, women are in the kitchen in my house. All relationship dynamics are extremely different and extremely unique. So how you see something may be very different. So. You may be in a relationship where you are just like, I'm going to quit my job so that I can focus on the family. And your friend on the other side is like, hell to the no, I'm not quitting my job for a man. And there's nothing wrong with any side of this argument. It's just that dynamics, babes, they don't match. So you better look out for that one. Number three, every, every single relationship has got its secrets. Spiri, spiri here. Every relationship is carrying a little secret. Everyone, every single relationship is carrying these little secrets that they don't want other people in the public to know. 
I'm telling you, here's the problem. The problem is that the advice that that couple is giving to you is based on these secrets that they're not telling you. So you don't have context around the advice they're giving you. So you want advice on adopting children. You want advice on having your own children. You want advice on which school to take your children to. There are secrets that those families have to themselves. The secret is that we have this expensive lifestyle, but we actually can't afford our, our kids' school fees. So when you come and you ask, I really want to take my child to the Hilton. I just don't know if it's, you know, or Michael House. I want to take my kid to Michael House. And then they discourage you on Michael House because they're broke. They don't have the money for Michael House. So now they're discouraging you and say, oh, you know, private schools don't even matter anymore. You know, there's no big difference. Just take your child to any school. It's okay. Because of the secrets that they have, because of the things that they went through, they are giving you advice that is tilted. We are human, guys. We are human. And this just leads me to number four. Every single relationship and every person in a relationship has suffered some sort of relationship trauma and this builds certain bias. So if I come from a relationship, if I come from a home where my dad cheated on my mother several times and my mother always forgave him and never left him. She was sad but she never forgave him. Whatever relationships I'm going to have are going to be based on this trauma that I went through. All the decisions I make in a relationship are going to be based on me knowing that I'm not going to be the type of woman who's going to take nonsense from a man. I'm not going to allow you to cheat once. All of those things are going to make you build a relationship in a very specific way. You may come from a household where your mom's a housewife, a very, very happy housewife, extremely happy. And your dad is the one that works. And what do you do in the relationship, you are more than willing to become a housewife as well because you just saw how happy all your siblings were, how happy you were, your dad was happy, everything was hunky dory. But then you go to your friend and you ask your friend for advice, and your friend is the one whose mom got cheated on and all of those things. And you say, Friend, I'm feeling like quitting my job so I can become a housewife. Your friend will be like, No, 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 don't do it. You will suffer. Relationship traumas. Both ways people have been traumatized, one way or another. We all have our own relationship backgrounds and histories that are affecting how we look at things moving forward. So when you go get advice from someone, what context does that person have? Hmm? Do they come from a successful relationship? A lot of the times we can't even get relationship advice from our parents because they have their own relationship traumas. So who's going to give us advice then? Who do we go to for advice if everybody's traumatized? Number five, God is ultimately the best place for us to go for our marriage advice. Even I have my own relationship traumas from whatever I have been through. I do, everybody does. I have a specific opinion on relationships because of the relationship I come from. I have a specific opinion on relationships on marriage because I come from a specific type of marriage. That's how it is. It's always going to be that way. So the best place to go is to God. And the best people to listen to are people led by God. Whatever questions you have about your marriage, you can find in the Bible. You want to know if you should be having countless hours of love, intimacy and hot sex with your husband? It's in the Bible. God wants us to have good, good loving with our husbands. He wants us to speak sweet nothings to his ear. He wants it, it's in the Bible guys, it's in the Bible, sweet nothings to the ear of your man. Hmm? To want him when the morning comes around, to have him, to enjoy him. He should enjoy your breasts, everything. I'm quoting the Bible here, huh? I am. Everything babes, everything. And the people around you, who may give you context and ideas for your relationship. That's the best that they can do. They can give you ideas, they can give you some context, they can broaden your perspective, but take everything with a pinch of salt. All right, good people, that's it for today's How I Do Things. But you know, every single Thursday, I give you a challenge, darlings. I give you a challenge for all the married couples. It's simple. Do it with your man. Just do it. 
I know, there are couples out there. You're married, you look happy, you post pictures on Instagram. You all are not getting into the sack. Why? Go be sexy for your man this week. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Until we meet again tomorrow morning for another live premiere. I'm Kapana Shimangi and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching and making it right until the end. I hope that you enjoyed this one and I hope you'll be coming back tomorrow for another live premiere. Now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and switch on the notification bell to make sure you know when we're premiering another video. And make sure that you binge watch because it's free, it's mandy and no one is judging you. Okay, until next time beautiful people. Bye.